guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming kind of a simple video, but I thought it would be fun to kind of show you guys some of my favorite products. I feel like I never really like rave about things on my channel because it just, you know, there's just never enough time these days on the internet. It feels like there's so many palettes coming out and I'm always so focused on palettes and things like that that I never go back and rave about things I'm loving that I use every day all the time. So I gathered up my favorite makeup that I use on a daily basis. It's all in this bag right here. And I just wanted to show you guys like my highlight reel for current makeup, things I'm using every day. So let me just dig in here. So my favorite setting spray of the moment is MAC Fix Plus. I go back and forth between a bunch of different um, setting sprays but this one is just such a great ride or die um, this is definitely not a secret product I mean most people in the makeup community know about Mac fix plus but you know not but not everyone is you know into makeup as much as I am but I think no matter what your skill level this is such a great setting spray I know it's not marketed as a setting spray but I think it's amazing at just making all the products, all your face products set so beautifully on your face. I feel like it definitely tones down any cakiness. And so I think it's a must have in every makeup lover's makeup bag. The next thing in here is my new favorite powder. I haven't really heard a lot of people talking about this powder, um, but this is the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Loose Setting Powder in the shade Banana. I have been loving this guy. I love the size of this container because honestly, you can fit any size powder brush in here. I've been just using this powder brush. I think I got it in a um, BoxyCharm box forever ago, but it just fits so nicely in here. I can tap it off and I can hit my under eyes with this and it's just such a great size for a setting powder and I like the powder. It's very finely milled. I haven't noticed any flashback or anything with this, but I also really don't do a lot of flash photography. So maybe I'm not the best person to talk about that particular feature of this powder, but I like this powder so, so much and you get a ton of product. It has a 12 month shelf life. It's cruelty free and you get 0.9 ounces of product. It just feels a lot bigger than a lot of the other powders I have. So if you're one of those people that is constantly getting through their loose setting powder, I would recommend picking this up and I just really like it. I think it's very easy to use and it does the job perfectly. So my next favorite that I've been using constantly is this Kevin Aquan bronzer. I'm actually wearing all of these products on my face today except the eyeshadow palette, but I did make an effort to use all of these products. Like I said, I basically do a shop my stash in my makeup collection. I don't film it for YouTube. I probably should, but every once in a while, every couple of days, I'll go through my makeup collection and pick out things to try out that week or just to rotate stuff out so everything's kind of getting some attention. I love the Kevin Aquan Neo blush in sunset and so when he came out with a new line of bronzers i picked up the shade dusk medium and i really like this it's a great color as you can see it's right here um it's not too warm it's not too cool it gives me like a nice sun kiss look i love the size of this um it's very sleek and it also has that like ombre effect so it's really nice because if you, you know, tan quite easily, you can kind of start off with the lighter side and then if you get darker, you can go on to the darker side. It's kind of a nice little bronzer and it is a little bit pricey, but I love his powder products. So great. The next thing I want to show you guys, this is dirty because I just use it and it's wet. This is my favorite sponge of the moment. This is the Sony Kashuk sponge. You can buy this at Target, I believe, and it has that cool marble effect. I like it. It's nice and wet and juicy. A lot of people ask me, like, should they get the beauty blender? Honestly, you don't need to buy a beauty blender. Just get the Sonia Kashuk sponge, the Flower Beauty sponge. I've seen that at Walmart. It's a purple sponge. It's so good. The Real Technique sponge, also available at Walmart and Target and all drugstores. It's like an orange sponge that's so so good and then the l'oreal sponge that's a pink one it kind of has like a shape like it's like a little it looks like a little bullet i don't know um it's so good so if you guys 
are not makeup junkies, don't waste your money on a beauty blender. Beauty blenders are great, I have them, but it's not a necessity. There's definitely great drugstore dupes out there, so check that out. Next in my bag of tricks is my current favorite foundation. I don't think you guys are gonna guess that this is my favorite foundation. I tried out so many of the new foundations that came out last month, and this was the one I wasn't even gonna try. Like, I totally put this one on the back burner, and the only reason I picked it up because Alta had a coupon, and I was like, sure, let me get it. And so I have been loving this guy. Like, I've used this the most. I'm pretty sure I'm like already like up to here on this foundation. This is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation up to 24 hour wear. This is amazing. I love the coverage. I'm wearing it today. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey on my skin but it also dries down and stays put. I wore this last weekend when I was in Arizona. It was so freaking hot at this wedding and my makeup stayed on and I just really, 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 really like this foundation. If you have really, really dry skin, you might not like this. I have dry skin, but I've always said I prep my skin for full coverage, so I always put down like a face oil or a nice moisturizer so my skin is like nice and plump and a really you know, mattifying foundation doesn't like it up. So I really, really like this foundation. It definitely surprised me. I, yeah, like I said, I tried a lot of the other new foundations that came out and that one is just working the best with my skin right now, which is great. The next thing I just recently picked out of my highlighter drawer. This was one of those that I bought because I thought it was really cool. Okay, there you can see the color. It's like a creamsicle. It's called Dreamsicle and it's like a beautiful orange highlighter. Obviously, it doesn't look very orange on my skin tone. It looks so good. I love this so much. I think this is limited edition, so I don't think you can get it anymore. But this is Dreamsicle by Becca. I'm sure they'll have a similar shade, or I'm sure if this shade isn't available, they'll come out with something similar. Becca makes beautiful highlighters. That's what they're known for. It is their strong suit. And if you've never tried a Becca highlighter, I would totally recommend picking up you know, the MVP Champagne Pop usually works on most skin tones, but I really like that shade. It's a little bit more unique for my collection. Not something I would usually be drawn to, like that creamsicle shade, but I love it. I think it looks so natural on my skin tone, so that was a huge win for me. Another Becca face product that is an oldie but a goodie. I picked this up basically for the name it's called sweet pea this is a blush i don't think this is available either but i love becca's face products again so even though you can't get this shade if there's some other shade you have your eye on i would recommend the formula so i picked this up because my husband used to call me sweet pea all the time when we first met and i love this color again i'm wearing it today it's just like a beautiful nude blush and it actually shows up on my skin tone. I'm really tan right now you guys. This is probably the darkest I'm gonna be this summer and I can still give myself a beautiful flush with that Becca blush so I love it so much and I'm so happy it's in my collection. For brows my go-to brow products have not changed in a long long time. I love this Anastasia brush for brows. I repurchase it over and over again. I think this is the number 12. It's like missing the writing <laughs> and I just love the bristles in this one and it lets me get really precise on the front part of my brows and then this is my favorite brow powder as you can see I've hit pan on this I need to just toss this because it's getting really hard to get to the product but I'm like determined so this is in the shade chocolate and I love it so much and then the final thing in ABH that I love for my brows is their clear brow gel I'm currently trying to use up the ColourPop brow gels because I bought a few of them at my Ulta, but I don't like the ColourPop one. I think the ABH brow gel is the best brow gel there ever was. My favorite primer of the moment is the Makeup Revolution Cut Crease blah blah blah. What is this called? Full Coverage Eyeshadow Base in the shade Create. You guys have seen me use this in so many videos and I really, really enjoy that. Favorite eyeliner hasn't changed either. I love the Pat McGrath eyeliners. I have the shade Extreme Black. I have the shade Black Coffee, and then this is her liquid liner. I recently repurchased this in the last summer sale event because this is the first one, and I've had this one forever. 
I want to switch over to the new one, but I still keep like squeezing out one more use, one more use out of this. I don't wear liquid liner as much as I used to, but honestly, that's my favorite. I love a good felt tip pen. I don't like to use brush applicators, and I don't like to use the dippy um, paintbrush looking things, and these are like the most opaque eyeliners for my waterline. They stay put. I've tried so many different eyeliners. I love these so much. I really hope she comes out with more shades. She only has like five or four shades, so I would love to see her come out with more shades. Oh. The last thing um, before the finale <laughs> product is this guy. This was a product that I did not love when I first picked it up. I picked it up because of the hype. Oh my god, Born This Way Concealer, Born This Way Concealer. I actually liked the foundation when I first tried it, and then I tried to try it again, and I feel like I can just never find the right shade for me in that foundation. The one shade I thought worked for me, I always felt really gray. Um, when I looked at myself once I've had the foundation on for a little while So I ended up not repurchasing that foundation once I finished it And then I got the concealer in the shade warm sand by the way, and I wasn't very impressed with it I didn't think it was doing anything for my under eyes I felt like it was pretty patchy and then all of a sudden a few weeks ago I picked this up and I started using it and my skin's been you know dry as per usual I don't think it's like extra dry or anything like that but this just worked so well and it works so well in Arizona and I've just been loving it in August and September so very happy to have had that in my collection. I forgot to mention mascara so hold on the finale item is coming but um, I love these two mascaras. This one I've had forever. I just picked up a new one. This is the Giga Black Lash by MAC and I use this on my lower lash line. It's like a cult favorite lower lash line mascara. And then this is a new one that I tried because Annette's Makeup Corner talks about this mascara all the time. And I haven't had this for very long. The only thing is it hasn't lasted very long. It's already clumping. Um, sometimes I put in contact lens solution to kind of like loosen up my mascaras. That was like a hack I saw on YouTube forever ago and it usually works for me. Definitely works to extend the life of mascara. So I do need to try some contact solution in here, but I started using this on August 12th and it's already a little bit clumpy, um, a little bit difficult to use, but when it was in its prime, it was fabulous and I really, really like that mascara. It definitely is a contender for my Lancome Monster Big Mascara, which is like my holy grail splurge when it comes to mascara is the Lancome one. So very excited about those two and I just wanted to share those with you guys. And then my holy grail eyeshadow palette right now. I think this might be my favorite eyeshadow palette of 2019. Unbelievable. Like, I think I was out of town when this got announced and then all of a sudden I just saw everyone's videos and I was like, I don't have $129 to buy this eyeshadow palette. Plus, Auntie Pat was coming out with a new palette and my entire makeup budget for September was allocated to Auntie Pat's palette. Um, but when I kept seeing videos on this, I was literally like so, so tempted and one day I like totally conned my husband into buying me this palette. So I got pretty lucky and I've just been playing with it ever since. She's got like this cream to matte, um, cream to powder formula in this palette in some of the matte shades. And it's just stunning. That green I swatched, this olive green matte shade, blends like a dream. I can't stop using it. It's this shade right here. It's such a beautiful crease color. Um, they're such beautiful mattes. Oh my gosh, look at this green matte. Um, and then there's this beautiful dark, dark green, like blue green shade. Like these are such stunning colors. I can't even tell you how much I love this palette. It's gorgeous. And so many people are like, oh, it's just a big neutral palette. I was like, you know what? I don't care. This is probably the best palette Natasha Denona has come out with, in my opinion. And I love the packaging. Okay, the gold palette was pretty bomb too. So I can't say um, between those two, but oh my God, this is so good. And it's huge. And I love it so, so much. I want to do a video, of course, doing a makeup look with this. The other really smart thing about this palette too that you guys should know, I don't know who I saw mentioning this, but it was really smart of them to mention, 
Each section is kind of designed to be a quad, which I think is so smart that she did that for people that are not makeup savvy. It kind of gives you like a color story to follow. So you can do an eye look with these four. You can do an eye look with these four. You can do an eye look with these four. It's really cool. I did an eye look with these four shadows, which I wouldn't have necessarily paired together, you know, just like thinking about it. And it turned out stunning. Like it was so pretty. I've worn these two together. I love mixing all these greens together. I haven't even gone through all the gold shimmer shades in this palette yet, but it is so, so good. Honestly, if you're like on the fence or you're on a tight budget, don't buy any other bullshit like makeup. Buy this. It's so good. It's so good. I'm sure the Sephora sale is coming up. You guys can get your hands on it then, but it's honestly a bomb palette and I'm so impressed with it. So it's crazy. I love it so much. I love this palette so, so much. It is not the palette I have on my eyes today because I needed to film a makeup look and I wanted to film a favorites video and kind of just give you guys like the highlight reel. But I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on my makeup favorites. Let me know what your favorites are. I love talking to you guys in the comments and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys.